Okay, today we are going to replace the uh, float switch on a Zoller sump pump. Uh, the switch is right here. Um, that's a gasket. And there's the switch. Switch is inside this box here. Can't get it out with the camera. Okay. All right. There we go. So you should have that. Some screws, brackets, this little plastic uh, little guy here. There's the switch. And the instructions. So, first thing now, I'm going to go get the sump pump, which is over here. And the sump pump. It still pumps, but it doesn't shut off when the water's out. It's still plugged in, but right now, when water goes in there, it does not shut off. We're just going to take the uh, switch out. Okay, so the sump pump is down in there. It's right there. Um, and there's a little bit of water in there, but not, not very much. Not enough to make it turn on. Um, and when it does turn on, it never turns off, so I'm going to pull the whole unit out. There's a little rubber um, bracket around the uh, this lead pipe here. It's a little rub rubber um, clamp. Uh, I need to use a screwdriver to loosen that and then take it off with the sump pump and then you can take the sump pump out and work on it. The actual, the actual um, switch goes right inside this little box here, and I'll show you. There's some four screws you got to take out. Let me get that out of there. There's the uh, the rubber clamp holding down the uh, pipe. Looks like it's a flathead. You just got to take that out. Okay, I've got it out. Um, so now the hole is deep. There we go. There's a little bit of water coming out of the pipe as, the, as I pull it out, the pressure released. Um, if you don't have a backflow valve, like this one, then I would highly recommend it, getting one. This is also a Zoller. This uh, prohibits the water coming back down into some pump as it goes out. So, all right, I'm gonna turn this guy over and drain the water out of him, and then we'll take him over to the workbench and um, we'll open her up. Okay, so here it is, uh, Zoller Company, Louisville, Kentucky. Um, little plate here. It's kind of tough to the M53 model. It's just a little little pump. Um, I think it's a 0.3 horsepower. Does a really good job. I've had it for like four years and the thing has never really had any problems. But they do the float switches do go out on them. So um, you gotta replace them every once in a while. So it was like 30 bucks on Amazon. I think I mentioned that. Um, these screws, this guy, this guy, and then there's two on the back side. Here. I'm going to take those out and, and that as well. Once that comes out, then this top will come off. Uh, I imagine it's going to be difficult to get that off, so we might have to pry it open. And then the gasket sits right here, um, which you'll have to replace with this gasket here. Make sure you do that because otherwise uh, you'll damage the gasket and water will get inside this unit and you, it will probably not work very long once that happens. Yeah, take got the uh, screws off. Just shove them over there, and um, so now you can take the unit, the head unit off. I did have to hit this little uh, lip. I hit it with a little hammer here. Um, it just fell apart. That's great. Um, to take the top unit off. So the top unit rolls over, um, and you can see inside now. 
So there's the switch we're going to replace right in there. You have to take out the stabilizer bar and then unhook. These are the wires coming off of the unit, these guys here, down to the housing, to the actual pump. Um, so make sure to take a picture or something um, of how it's wired so you can reference it as you're doing the, uh, the swap. So you, it sounds like from the instructions you want to undo all the wiring and then do the gasket and then rewire it. Otherwise you won't be able to get the gasket back on. Okay, tops off. The switch is unhooked. Uh, I took the gasket off, which it came off uh, pretty clean. It's a little bit of residue here. I might um, try to get some of that off, but I don't really want to go too crazy with it. Uh, here's the unit just sitting over here. Um, had, had to unhook the arm from the top of the float. So that's just kind of hanging there. You just have to re, re hook it up. It was very easy. Uh, so now we'll take the this uh, the switch out of the, the housing here, and you can see you can kind of see that little claw thing moving there. That's the same thing we got here. So we're just gonna go drop in there like that. So, okay, new one's in. That was really easy, remarkably easy. So here's the old one. I just used the same uh, brace plate. Uh, that was already in there. I didn't reuse the, the new one that came with the kit, so probably don't need to keep it. But okay, I'm gonna hook it back up to the um, head now. Or to the okay, main. so now it's back on top. Before you hook up your wires, make sure you put the new gasket on. I made the mistake after telling you guys not to forget to do that. Um, if you look on the main on the uh, switch, the black line coming from the main pump goes on the top and the white coming from the switch comes out on that same side so it's like if you're looking at it the black and white are on the same side and the white and black underneath it are on the same side and then the white goes on this point the black goes on this point if you're looking at the switch it looks like it's backwards but it's not that's how it came off so I'm just going to reattach the screws and I'll test it the screws are back on um, gasket. That was a little bit tricky getting the, the screws to line up a little bit. This little bar I got my hand on, this little guy here, uh, was kind of up and preventing this from fitting, fitting uh, flush. So I had to push down on that a little bit uh, to get it to stay flush. So it was a little tricky and then getting the screws in uh, just right. It took a little bit of patience but um, no big deal. Um, got it plugged in over there. Uh, so test it out, it turns on, and turns off, it turns on, turns off, perfect. So I'll tighten up the screws, put the float back on, and then we'll set it back you in the Put hole. your, your plastic, uh, screw, whatever that is, cover the hole up. If you don't, don't forget that, because otherwise water will get into the unit. All right, so let's uh, put it back in, and I just dry fit it with the rubber um, clamp, and um, there's a little bit of water in here, but uh, you just need to stick it back in that, and then tighten the screw on the clamp, and you plug it in, and you're good to go. So, um, hope this has been helpful.